Yo, 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 how you doing? Crosby is having someone here or cut the night. Welcome to another Ford Assault video. Today, it's going to be a special video. It's going to be a setup video. i um, just going to go in, into my settings, sensitivity, all that type of jazz. And uh, yeah, but before we get into that, thank you very much for watching. Go ahead and check out my dude Don D down in the description below. Makes all these awesome beats that you listen to right now. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out my dude Game Boy. It helps me out with thumbnails as well. Awesome, awesome homies. Go ahead and check them out down in the description below. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So we're going to go ahead and hop into a match right around now. Uh, it'll be just whatever I, uh, I do that one. Uh, there we go. TDM match. And uh, we'll get started with the crosshair. So for the crosshair, or sorry, not the crosshair, the sensitivity. Sensitivity, I like to have it 133. That's on the iPad Air. Not the iPad Air. I always say iPad Air, but it's the iPad Pro, the 11 inch. Um, so I feel like that's uh, that's a good kind of oopsies. I'm gonna do that. It's a good kind of um, medium between high sensitivity and lower sensitivity. Because lower sensitivity typically is typically better for the kind of the the one taps and the not super fidgety um, aiming back back and forth. So I'll show you. I actually change crosshair size. Um, mine's 37, by the way. If you want to copy that? Go ahead. Um, but I find that having it between anywhere between 120 and 140 is a good range for the iPad Air. iPad Air, I keep saying it. The iPad Pro 11 inch um, in between being able to control the spray pattern, but as well as being accurate with it and not just kind of always overshooting. Um, so let's say I wanted to aim at the dude's head right there instead of me going like this and going past it I can just go like this and go right to it, right? Um, so right there That instance it's really really beneficial to have a lower sensitivity, but because I have a slightly higher sensitivity I can whip around and Just like that turn on my enemy sometimes it takes a little bit more than just a swipe but for the most part you'll be able to there you go. You'll be able to uh, kind of use the best of both worlds there. And uh, yeah, that's uh, my sensitivity. And I used to, so for me, sometimes it's a little odd. Sometimes I use a higher sensitivity um, when I snipe. I go between 160 to 170. And I like to do that because it's easier for me to kind of just spray back and forth. And kind of like to change um, paths. To where I want to shoot easier. It's more, more kind of my style. So I'll show you right now, actually. 169. It allows me to to be a little bit more accurate if I can control it, and that's that's what I want, right? Uh, so right there, sometimes it would take me a little bit more time to be able to flick up like that, but because my sensitivity is a little higher, I can flick up and just get there ever so slightly. There are some trade-offs though. Sometimes it's a little too quick for my uh, my actual aim, my for my muscles to catch on, and I'll actually overshoot or undershoot, uh, if that makes any sense. So I'll, instead of instead of shooting the pillar right there, I'll go from here and hit it over here. Other times I want to hit the pillar and I go from here to here. It's uh you gotta practice. It's definitely a lot of muscle memory. It's not just something that comes overnight. For me right now, I'm doing fairly well because I've been on and off like this for years and years and years. It's not just like day and night type of thing. Um, but I do occasionally miss, as you can tell right there. Especially if, ooh, especially if the player is good and they they know kind of what they're doing. They'll bob in and out, and they won't actually let me get the kill on them really easily. Uh, let's see if you're gonna do it. man. I kill from behind. I was gonna see if I could do a frag scope there. There we go. It's stuck. All right, one more kill or one more death, and then we'll go back to uh, over sensitivity. There's another part of sensitivity which, which is also tracking. So if you see, I'm trying to stay on the light bulb right there. Right. If you stay on the light bulb and you're able to track really well, odds are you'll you'll be able to. Uh, to control the sensitivity really well. So right there, mine's a little off. Keep scoping. Wee. All right. Odds are you'll be able to control it really well, and that's kind of what you want. So let me go in over here. Toggle. All right. 
So let's say we're going with the AK, right? I'm trying to stay on that light. I'm going all the way over here. It's a little difficult, especially when it's up there. But I'm trying to track it, right? And that's what you want. Um, here, let's say I'm trying to track uh, this corner. This corner of the box. It's a little difficult on touch because it's not going to be super smooth. But if you do it correctly and if you do it enough times, it'll actually get really, really smooth. Especially if you're warmed up. I'm not warmed up, but I can tr still track it fairly well. Sometimes sometimes I still wish I had a, a higher sensitivity, but I can't always do that. So that's okay. Just gonna find something that's good for you. And I would recommend putting your sensitivity super high and then gradually turning it down so that it's comfortably tracking. Like this is fairly comfortable for me. It's not perfect, but I can't really say that's gonna be perfect if uh, I haven't actually warmed up. That's another key part. You gotta warm up with the sensitivity that you're comfortable with, right? Because if you don't do that, then you can honestly spend 20 minutes and just shoot bots. And if you don't do that, sometimes, you know, you'll be fine. Other times, you'll definitely see that your shot is not good, right? Doo -doo. Um, So just, I recommend shooting bots, even if it's just uh, offline uh, play. But uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the sensitivity side of things. Uh, the crosshair size, crosshair color, and all that, it's really just preference. Um, I find that anywhere between 30 and 45-ish is a good crosshair size. Um, colors, it's really just whatever you want. It can be whatever helps you best or whatever you want visually. Um, opacity, it can be 0 or 100. <laughs> I tend to keep it at 100. I don't really see a reason to have it any lower. Crosshair size is 37. Um, let's put it at 100 and see how it would play. Uh, yes, sir, I am. Um, let's see how we play. What will we do if we do well at all? Uh, there's also another thing for crosshair placement. It's really, really important. Um, you want to try and place it so that you get the first shots on the person if you see them. So what I mean by that is I know the person is going to come around here, right? So I have my crosshair aimed already at that corner. It might not be perfect, but you see how I come out? I'm ready for that peak right and you want to kind of work on your crosshair placement as you keep going so let's say I'm going around here and I'm just waiting for someone to come out here bam see over there that type of stuff it's it's all game awareness map awareness and just general kind of being adept to what you're trying to do right so practice 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 and that crosshair is way too big. It's just, it's, it's too obstructive. Uh, so I'm going to put it back down to 37. Like I said, you can have it somewhere between 30 and 45, I'd say. Anything after that is really just kind of up to you. Um, but I'd say 30 to 45 is my sweet spot. And I think most of you would be okay with that. But yeah, I'm going to keep going over here. My HUD sensitivity, or not my HUD, sorry, my, uh, right here. Ooh, let's go, beautiful. My, uh, okay, there you go. So my HUD, is <laughs> too bad. My HUD's like this for a reason. Here, I'll show you my HUD right now. So the way I play is like this. And I've made a few videos with, uh, with claw, right? With both, uh, index, index fingers and both thumbs on both hands. So what I do is the one side, right, is for moving, right? So let me, right, finish customizing, right? So my one side is for movement, moving, that one is for moving, and that one is for shooting. Not a great, you know, demonstration here, but shooting. The reason I have it like that, instead of having the shooting side on the same side as the moving side, is because if I do that, I'll have to physically move my thumb to shoot or I'd have to dedicate another finger to shoot. And I'm already uncomfortable enough as it is doing a <laughs> claw with both hands, right? So if I do that, if I take it off, it's the same kind of situation as it's got. It's, you can't really see it now, it's, it's green. But if you, if you take your finger off the paddle or off the joystick, right? To do anything, reload, switch weapons, anything like that, you're taking time and movement from your aiming stick right it's the same type of thing here you're taking time and you're taking accuracy away from being able to touch it and shoot it all in one motion rather than aiming 
and then shoot it, right? This way I can aim and shoot at the same time rather than aim then shoot, right? If that makes any sense. That's the reason as to why I have them on separate sides. I've just grown accustomed to that. That started with uh, C Ops, Critical Ops, uh, back in like 2015. Was it 15? No, it was like 2016, I want to say. Um, because of Modern Combat, I'd have it on the exact same side every single, every single Modern Combat uh, since Modern Combat One, right? But Critical Ops is where it switched because it was it required you to be a lot more, you know, fast paced. Modern Combat was a re really good shooting. Modern Combat Three is my favorite shooter of all time, but it was never that, um, you know, super duper twitchy kind of shooter. Whereas Critical Ops, Fort Assault, even Bullet Force at times. Um, and standoff too actually are all that those types of twitchy FPS's that uh, you can really benefit from being very accurate and being very uh, Quick with your reaction time So he did Woo! This is what happens when you're bad <laughs> But <laughs> no, no <laughs> He killed me uh, But yeah, everything else is just kind of preference. I like to jump shot Sometimes, but I don't usually do that. It's usually, especially after they, they patch this uh, nerf and or they patch this uh, glitch in uh, Fort Assault a while back, where you could actually jump and crouch and it'd make your shot like really accurate. Um, I didn't really use it, but I definitely had a few instances where I used it by accident. And uh, I realized I'm like, oh, okay. But yeah, and then the crouching on the one side and the switching. Uh, you know weapons and everything on the other side just because it it kind of divides everything more or less evenly I feel like the left side has a little bit more to do though at times, but to be honest, I think it's fairly even uh, So it's not putting too much strain on my My hands or my individual hand or like distributed and That's another thing you're gonna have to stick to uh, if you're if you're trying to play claw if you're trying to play any new sensitivity or HUD or anything you're gonna stick to it. If you don't stick to it then your muscles are just like gonna say nah man and they're not gonna they're not gonna go well for it's not gonna go well for you usually me Ooh. i think that's about it to be honest uh i don't know what else i could be missing that's uh i think that's it sat across there so watch this is this is without strata crosshairs it's not the end of the world but i definitely think that i definitely think that i benefit a little bit more from one tap with sat crosshairs that being said, it could just be 100%. Like I don't, I don't truly know, but it's just a feeling that I have, and from from playing first-person shooters for a long, long time, especially on mobile, it seems to be my gut feeling. Like, don't get me wrong, I definitely like, definitely like dynamic for some stuff, but static is typically where I gravitate towards. Ooh. All right, let me put that back to static. But uh, I think that's it. I, I really do think that's it. There might be something else that I'm missing. Um, those are just kind of my settings, my config, and a little bit of so, like a few tips sprinkled here and there. Oh, there's someone behind me. If I missed anything, let me know. Or if there's something else that you would like to know, just uh, let me know down in the description below. And uh, I think we're just going to play this game out. But uh, yeah. Oh, wrong way. Wait. Anyone else? Oh, there's someone down there. Oh, I was trying to one-tap him. Oh, no. What? Dude, I thought I hit him in the head. That's why I kind of stopped shooting there. That's wild. Three, two, one. He's still there. Ooh. What's my ping at 33? Things good. Alright. <laughs> Kenny Mac, my dude. Just got worked on. But see, that's that's all crosshair placement, right? You get the crosshair placement right. You can typically anticipate where they're gonna come from, especially in TDM. It's really, really easy to predict spawns. The the best way I, I can predict spawns and just kind of know spawns is looking at my minimap and Seeing, whoa, and seeing like where is there where are my teammates and where where's the gap where's the gap like 
if I'm here, my teammates are around me, do I see anyone in front of me? And if I don't see anyone in terms of teammates, then odds are there are probably some people over there that I should probably go try and take down. Casual groupies. Oh! Right there, that's what I'm talking about. The 133 cents, you're able to snap, just break your neck right around and get that kill if needed. Ooh. Okay. I think I hear someone over here. Another thing is, have a head headphones on. They really do help you. Oh, I thought he was dead. And, uh, not, they don't need, they, they, they don't really need to be the most expensive headphones, but they do need to be ones that have left and right and hopefully they're decent ones like i'd say any any headphones over like 20 dollars should be okay some are like really really cheap and they're still really really good for the money but uh typically i'd say anything anything over 20 dollars should be okay for gaming uh for music listening that's a different story just depends on your preferences and kind of what you want to do no oh they're all there Oh, come on, you robbed me! No! You robbed me of that freaking feed! Teammates! 4 HP in a dream, 4 HP in a dream, can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? 4 HP in a dream. I don't think I can do it. Uh, oh, okay. One tap, I'm dead. I'm dead, yeah. <laughs> One second left. Damn, alright, how do we do? How do we do? Uh, not the greatest. Well, 30 and 13, definitely better than I thought we were going to do. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a follow as well as a like. Go ahead and let me know if there's anything else that I missed that you would like me to cover. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Go ahead and check my dude Dondi and Game Boy. Awesome, awesome homies down in the description below. And uh, while you're at it, check out myself if, uh, if you want to. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Peace.